Welcome to the Transform Your Wealth and Health podcast, where experts in wealth, health, and fitness help transform your life. Here's your host, Andy Arder. So today's podcast episode is a live recording with George Stone, the property sourcer, who tells us how he sources property and how you can do the same too. It takes a little while to get going, but stick with it. It's got some gold in it. George tells you how he's amassed at this minute 2,000 units that he has for his clients. So if you're interested in wealth creation, listen to this. This guy is an incredible guy. Stick with it. We're on Facebook Live, George. Good. (laughs) That's good to know. Okay, so we are going to record the Transform Your Wealth and Health podcast live today. And we have George Stone... Hello, everybody. George, Hi. how are we doing? Yeah. George, you're most well known for your property sourcing, would it be fair to say? Yeah, that's correct. That's what I do. So across the platforms that I'm known on, mostly it's about property sourcing. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to touch on that kind of stuff soon. I, I might add, actually, property sourcing for particularly rent to rent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And SA? Yeah, uh, service apartments and also HMOs. Okay, then fair enough then. Right, so we're going to be talking about that kind of stuff. Hopefully everybody on Facebook will tune in and tell their friends, etc. And before we get going too much, I just want to say welcome to the show, George. Welcome, thank you. Thank you. And thanks for coming over. It's a pleasure. We will crack on with the questions. Yeah. But would you like to tell us a little bit about your your health stuff during the show. I thought I'd ask that now because you've had a particular problem and I thought I'd ask before we get into it too much whether it'd be good good to ask you about that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, So you can ask me, yeah, it's fine. Is that all right? Absolutely. Okay then, okay. Yeah, because it's part of the story, so... Yeah, sure. Well, it's absolutely fine. Let's crack on, George. Straight away, as it's live, would you tell us a little bit about your background and your story, please? Okay, so um, right now I'm doing uh, property sourcing, but... Before that, obviously, I was doing different different things. My background is mm. that I'm a qualified uh, social worker um, in my past. Have you, have you mentioned that before? Because no, not no, many people are going to know many, that. Not many people know that. So <laughs> my professional background was based on being um, a qualified social worker. That was back in 1995 to 97. So you got a degree at university yeah. to be able to yeah, do that, yeah, take yeah, it, yeah? Got, yeah, we're wearing the, all the kind of paraphernalia. Right, well the, done. The, the, the picture, that's <laughs> fine, thank you. Yeah. Um, so w- when I did that, I did that for a number of local, different local authorities yeah. uh, back in the 90s, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of culminated in me becoming quite senior in, in local authority. Mm-hmm. So I worked my way through quite how, quickly, within a couple of years. How senior? Uh, so uh, the last job I had it was a, as a deputy director for Hounslow Council. So very, very senior there, yeah, really. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so quite senior. So did that quite quickly. So... Uh, qualified in ninety seven, mm-hmm. and by two thousand and three, I was a deputy director. What where, whereabouts was you from? What area was you living? Uh, at the time, I lived in Essex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so but uh, was that an, an Essex boy. Absolutely, Essex boy. Yeah. Well done. I'm a West Ham fan. You know. Oh no, you've gone and spoiled it now, George. Come on. <laughs> you know I'm a West Ham fan. You know I'm a West Ham. West Ham won the World Cup, though, of course, didn't of they? Course, I tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I always remind everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so that was a, so up to two thousand and three, um, and during that that role as a senior um, uh, manager, yeah, I, I was a budget holder, responsibility for asylum seeking services, mm-hmm. and within that, um, we I, I kind of saw some gaps from the service providers who were providing those services, and I mm-hmm. thought, well, actually, do you know, I could probably provide a better service. Mm. So I started doing that, uh, providing services for uh, asylum seekers. It, uh, that turned into a business working with about. 13 different local authorities and at the time when I started it I did both jobs so hmm. I continued with the, the senior manager role yeah. and also set the business up with a business partner and, and, and went on um, from that that was in two we started that in 2004 well, did anybody say anything that they were sort of unhappy that you were doing these two roles or? Uh, do you know I, I had a really quite fortunate position because when they put me in this role I was kind of freelance at, right. the, at the time mm. so um, they gave me an office they gave me a, an, a secretary yeah. private secretary Kind of did as I as I pleased. So they I did, helped you to do it pretty much. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> okay. they gave me an office in a kind of remote location. Yeah. So I could pretty much come and go as, as I pleased. Yeah. It was about um, performance because I worked for um, Hounslow Council mm-hmm. and I was instrumental and, and key, in fact, in getting them three stars because I was a kind of a, 
uh, a performance related kind of manager yeah yeah. so I was a bit of a troubleshooter and stuff mm-hmm. like that. so I helped them to get three stars mm. and that's why they kind of you know applauded me and gave me all these different things right so but that gave me flexibility to work do that and, and, and uh, do, the, do the business as well mm-hmm. so I set it up that was going quite well um, worked with different in different local authorities and then I thought to myself actually it's going so well I'm going to give up the management role and go yeah. into the business full time right now that management role must have paid quite well back in them days so back in 2003 uh, at that time I was probably putting about 100k a year and you packed that job in yeah yeah to do yeah, yeah. right okay <laughs> yeah. my door's going to drop in a minute <laughs> yeah. 100k back in those days 2003 wow. 2004 yeah I was doing well, 100k a year yeah wow. um, good to you good it was nice, yeah. yeah I mean yeah. I did a couple of things there. I even bought a house on, with, with you know some of the changes and stuff like saying yeah, yeah. Um, so that was quite good um, but then I, I felt that the business could do more mm-hmm. so um, I, I gave up the, the, the job um, mm. and went into the business full time mm. um, and then quickly realised that it was difficult to source stock yeah. for the business. Mm. Again, this is back in 2004, yeah. stroke five now. So moving things on a little bit, is sourcing the properties still the main problem now? or? Well, what I did was, just to tie that off, what yeah. I did at the time was I then set up a letting agency. Yeah. So um, I set up a letting agency to source stock for the business. Yeah. That's what I did. So mm-hmm. that made it a bit easier to source right. stock because we could legitimately okay. source stock as a listing agent, yeah. as opposed to going to a third party listing agent. Yeah, so letting agent, I've heard, I don't know that much about it, but from what people tell me, it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't for me, actually, mm-hmm. uh, because of the, I, I, it was very difficult meeting expectations of landlords and tenants, Yeah, because they have opposing expectations. Right, yeah. yeah. And you have to kind of have a very strong sense of patience and mm-hmm. quite a tough skin to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Um, that. That wasn't particularly me, but then again, the business wasn't set up for that. The, the 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 kind of main the, the, the business that we got yeah the the tra- the passing traffic business that we got yeah was a, a bonus to the real purpose for setting up the business right yeah. okay yeah. so so moving on to today then let's just touch on slightly yeah yeah uh, I mentioned earlier that you you've had some sort of health issues and I've wondered how that had impacted on your business and your your life basically I'm really pleased to ask that question mm-hmm. because it's it, it's it's the kind of foundation even like of how that's yeah. where I am today yeah. what I'm doing I thought I'd ask because it's quite a serious illness that you had yeah and uh, if you know if you wasn't comfortable with it I thought we need to get this it's out it's no problem yeah it's yeah. fine so yeah, it's fine. fine yeah okay yeah so um, I think uh, actually uh, about 2012 mm-hmm. I had HMO business we I was I had an HMO business where um, I managed about 200 rooms that business started off in 2012 December that's- to 2012. That's a reasonable amount of rooms, George. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, well, it went from uh, zero to 200 properties in about 18 months. I kind of get this feel about you. You're an all or nothing kind yeah, of guy. Yeah, just, just, just straight in. <laughs> Go yeah. for it. Yeah, I mean, that that business, we started with £5,000 of cash. And mm-hmm. within 18 months, it was turning £80,000 through uh, per month through the business. Yeah. Wow, within so a million, million, yeah, million, million pound business Yeah, million pound business yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 within with 18 months. Yeah, how did you do uh, it? Come on, then you got. So there's no good saying these things you know, to us to us guys that are touching on bits and pieces yeah, of the property. Yeah, you, we need we need some facts and facts and details of how you did it. Yeah, so. I mean, <laughs> it was a it, it's it's a property is a people business. Yeah. you know, and it's about relationships, it's about networking. Yeah, um, it's about getting on with people. It's about being honest. It's about working with integrity. Mm-hmm. It's just things like that. It's not mm. difficult things. Mm. It's things that you do in your everyday life. But, yeah, you know, you, and you do it well. Mm. So uh, for, for, for me, it was really about. Being personal, um, being being honest with, with people, and people liking you. Mm. You know, people do yeah. business with people they like. They don't. I've, I'm doing a little bit of uh, stuff on the podcast now, talking about how to sell stuff. You know, we were we were talking earlier about some of the bigger companies that you're dealing with now, um, JLLs and, yeah. and huge companies like that. Um, and those guys, exactly as you say, that even the huge company, biggest company you can think of, you'll still end up dealing with an individual. Absolutely. So you know, if you can create individual. Um, personalities with them and, and the individual uh, trying to get a word now George what's the word I'm looking for um, relationships yeah. is the word individual relationships where you, you work closely with people and, and, and that's just the way it doesn't matter what size the company it's always been the way um, for, for stuff that we do you know in terms of sales setting in sales uh, I've always said we I, I never sell you know when the staff come in we yeah. never sell yeah. it's always been about helping people yes and if you're interested showing interest in people mm. and what, what they need what they're trying to achieve mm. then that will generally get you a sale if that's yeah, what you want yeah sure okay 
So, who inspired you along the way? Because this this kind of stuff that you were achieving took a lot of effort, and it wasn't something that you did overnight. You you know you did them quickly, but nevertheless, you had to put a ton of work in. So, how did you maintain that, and who who helped you? Before I ask that, cause yeah. I, I'm just going to finish off the health. Go for it. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, that was back in 2012. Done the business HMO. Mm-hmm. Um, that. Uh, that was it's work intensive it's labour intensive that is it's quite intensive yeah, yeah. but I did have staff um, but right, I still meant right. that I did quite a lot because it was 200 rooms mm-hmm. um, and uh, I suddenly became unwell after a visit to the GP so uh, to cut a long story short yeah. uh, there's a very I quickly ended up in hospital uh, with, with and it was di- I was diagnosed with kidney failure right. and um, I then had to very quickly go on to dialysis so within a matter of days, weeks, my life yeah. was completely yeah. turned around. Yeah, so it was really serious, but, and you were still running these big companies even though you was ill. Yeah, so I still, uh, still had the 200, 200 properties, yeah. but um, it, it was basically too much. Um, yeah. So I had to do something different. Right. And uh, in terms of how that transpired into where I am now, yeah. um, I was, it, it was a very simple story. I was mm. walking along, uh, our office is in Stratford, and I was walking in Stratford one day and I looked up at this tall building mm. of the many that they've now got in yeah, Stratford. Yeah, yeah, great area, yeah. Yeah, and um, I kind of decided, bizarrely, that I'm, I'm, I need to have 20 of those properties. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just as you do, just walking down the street and you decide these things. <laughs> as you do. Um, I think it was brought out, because I had some confidence in Stratford, because we mm. two things happened to me whilst I was in Stratford, two key things. Yeah. One is we became w- the third top performing lesson agency in Stratford right. in a very short period of time. Mm-hmm. And we went from uh, a, a, a property list of, from, of about 13 yeah. to about 90 very, very quickly mm-hmm. because of some systems that I put into place yeah. to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, We had this whole thing going on with Guntry and getting properties. So that was a that was a, a milestone, and the other reason was because I was in Stratford because of the Olympics, in yeah. 2012. Yes, and um, I, again, I was the only agency in the whole of the area hmm. who phoned Locog, who were the Olympic organisers, um, to offer them beds, uh, rooms, etc. Mm-hmm. And when I made that phone call, the head the, the head of accommodation, yeah, screamed with delight when I called her and said, <laughs> "I've been waiting for this call." I said, "What's the problem?" She said, "I've got I need five thousand bed spaces." <laughs> <laughs> so, so not, that, not 500 this yeah. was 5,000 yeah 5,000 bed spaces yeah for the, for the Olympics oh my god and, and at the time <laughs> at the time kind of coincidentally I, I, I acquired quite quickly a property of 188 units right um, and then I had a relationship with Locog I had you know so uh, purchase orders coming through so those two things went nicely together the 188 units yeah. and the fact that they wanted five yeah what would you have rather came first? Well, if you're if you're someone that's starting out at the minute, what would you suggest they do first? Um, in terms of, of the property, or yeah, so I mean, you had 188 properties that yeah. became available yeah. to you, yeah. and 5,000 people that were looking for for, 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 yeah. for accommodation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, I've learned very I've, I've learned very quickly in property. It's about it's about uh, clients, uh, tenants, right? You know. Um, it's not about property stock yeah, if you're yeah. looking to yeah because there's plenty of stock out there is that what plenty you mean? of stock out there. Yeah. stock is available all the time you yeah know? Um, it's it's you need a strong data, database of of tenants and applicants mm-hmm. whichever field you're in yeah you know, it's the same for me now we operate in the service department well I still it's business to business yes but we still need lots of business clients yeah to enable to us to deliver on the stock mm-hmm. that we've got and because obviously where you are now and you've moved things on yeah. Are you looking at the smaller and medium companies or are you just talking to the huge companies that are out there? So we offer a range of services, right. uh, different products, mm-hmm. um, we, and we work across the scale, you know, across the spectrum of the whole service department industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, it includes uh, si- single unit operators yeah. who might have one to three to four units and yeah. building all the organically from, from unit to unit. Mm-hmm. We work with those. Uh, we also work with uh, startup uh, companies. Mm. We work with SMEs mm-hmm. uh, as well, and we also work with the large institutional operators because, as business as business partners with ASAP, who are the Association of Service Department. For right. Us. Okay. So we work right across the yeah. spectrum. Because yeah. we were talking about two companies earlier, I won't mention their names, but two of the companies we were saying one of them turns over seven billion yeah. US, yeah. and the other one turns over sixteen billion US. So we, you know we're talking reasonable sized companies now that you associate with, yeah. as well as the the smaller companies and people too. 
So, so it's yeah, quite a range, isn't it? It is quite a range, and, mm. I, and I kind of wanted to just give some caveat to that because yeah. how that how I got into that position because yeah. um, just to demonstrate how it's about people skills, mm. and how you get on with people, mm. and how that can then sort of lead into another open another door. If yeah, you like. yeah, yeah. So um, we, uh, I'm trying to think which one, which one came first. Yeah. Mm. So we we made some I made some connection with. So actually, going back to me walking up and looking at the, the, tall, <laughs> yeah, the tall building, yeah. Yes, tell us. Yeah, so I walked into an office yeah. where the tall building was, and I said, I'd like 20 properties, <laughs> okay. please. And so she looked at me and she said, well, right, in, in, you know, we're in credibility. So yeah. like, well, well, let's go, well, why? And I said, because I'm going to give them to my business clients. Now, at the time, I had no business clients. <laughs> I've heard this <laughs> yeah, a few times by other yeah. people that have yeah. done, not on, not on that scale, George. Yeah. I get a feeling that you do things on a bit of a scale. Always, yeah, <laughs> try and, yeah. I mean, try and try and go to the, you know, try and go to another level. Yeah, you know, the, come out of your comfort zone, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, um, so I asked her. She said she couldn't help me. I, I thought, okay, well, I expected that. Yeah. But she, but I, but my colleague down the road might be able to help you. <laughs> so okay then. So she gave me a, a colleague's number. I phoned a colleague, and the colleague just said, no, can't can't help you. And I don't know. It was one of those conversations where mm. I, I kind of didn't want to take no for an answer. No. Now I didn't. I wasn't pushy. I wasn't aggressive. But I, I kind of just kept the conversation going yeah. lightly. And again, it's about those people skills again. Yeah. Uh, because at the end of that conversation, she said, well, come on down and, and have a look. This is from an initial note. Right. When I went to see her, that meeting ended with me getting 15 properties. So Unbelievable. That, so that walking along and looking up at the building ended with yeah. 15 properties within yeah. a couple of Was that there. a bit of a surreal conversation that you had with this person, bearing in mind you didn't have anybody to put in these buildings? Well, well completely, because once I got those 15 properties, I was thinking, okay, what do I do, <laughs> what do, I do now? But talking about the nitty gritty of that, so you got the 15 properties. Yeah. So how long did you get before you were responsible and needed to put some money into those properties? You know, Because if, if the time lag's not right, yeah. you're paying for 15 properties I take it yeah and so nobody in them yeah but w- our, our model's not just based on us investing it's about bringing other investors in as well right so that's how because we can mitigate the risk and et cetera, yeah. et cetera. so mm-hmm. you know that's that's basically what I did with that stock you know yeah. I bought another, yeah. other investors other, yeah, who, other, other who funds yeah. also, who already had people that might be able to go into this property. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So, we, so we did it that way and we were able to scale and build it very very quickly mm-hmm. now that stock came from can I mention the company name I think you ought to yeah, yeah. So that stock came from JLL yeah uh, and um James Lang LaSalle. Yeah, James yeah, Lang LaSalle, yeah, LaSalle yeah. who are one of the biggest uh, property companies yeah, across the yeah. UK. Yeah, that's the guys we were talking about with the, I believe it's 7 billion yeah. turnover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, and um, I can't, that thing about going to the top again. Yeah. I, although I was dealing, because we don't deal with local offices a lot mm-hmm. because of the, the, the what they've got, got. It's very competitive in local offices mm-hmm. and the mindset's different. Yeah. So, we, we tend not to deal with those. And, from that meeting and get, getting those properties, mm. I then went to the corporate head for um, JLL mm-hmm. um, and, and, and and developed a relationship, mm. you know, very, very quickly. Now from, uh, and again, this is about people skills, uh, again, because from that relationship, we are, as I said, we're business partners of ASAP. Yeah. That person, who I got on with very well, mm-hmm. then sponsored us for the business partnership with ASAP, mm. you know. And then also from that meeting, she was a former colleague in Foxton's with her her yeah. counterpart in Hamptons. So this is the big estate agent company, Foxton's, yeah? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So they were, they, her colleague, who, who she knew in, in Foxton's, yeah. was now working for Hamptons as in, in, as a counterpart right, in the okay. same role. Yeah. So she introduced me to the Hamptons ah, person. I guess you. So yeah. there was a link. Yeah, yeah. And then the Hamptons person, yeah. who's also friends, went to the <laughs> wedding went to the wedding of her client's part in Savills. So now your network has grown. It's grown. Yeah, just by, just by yeah. from one conversation. Wow. Yeah. yeah. This and that's can how, happen, can't it? Yeah, yeah, so it's just bounced on. And that's how, um, you know, I've now that's how we now work with JLL, mm-hmm. Hampton International, mm-hmm. uh, Knight Frank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, what was I saying? Uh, Hampton's, Knight Frank, Savills and JLL. Oh. Yeah. That's, uh, some of the really big names in property. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Top, yeah. top companies across the yeah. UK for yeah. property. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they supply stock. So, talking about your illness earlier, yeah, if you could bring us around to how that culminated earlier on this year. Yeah, okay, so uh, the, the, the reason why I was looking up at this building to, and I wanted yeah. 20 properties yeah. was because I had to do something different once the illness came. 
Yeah. So there was an intention about looking up at that at that building because mm-hmm. I had to create a new business. Yeah, uh, one that I could work around the illness whilst I was having treatment. Yeah, sure. Because uh, I've been diagnosed with uh, chronic kidney disease. Yeah, and I then had to go on dialysis three times a week for six hours per per time. So that's eighteen hours a day. It's quite you know, so eighteen hours per week. week yeah. Per week, sorry. Yeah. So it's quite you know a big chunk of time taken out. So I had mm. to do something around that. Yeah. Um, and if possible, even work whilst I was having dialysis. As well. did, so you do, did you do that though? Did you work while you was on every, the dialysis every machine? Single time, every single time. You, you're yeah. an incredible every, guy. Every single time. <laughs> you, so, you do not cease to amaze so, me. So, um, you know, you'd have patients sort of sleeping and doing whatever they were doing and I'd be just sort of tapping away or I'd be on the phone calls kind of pulling bills together. Yeah. It was a bit, it was a bit crazy. These, these deals with these big companies even yeah, though you're on the dialysis machine. I'd be on the phone to JL and Night Frank and stuff like that. Yeah. So people that are out there that are thinking well, you know, I haven't got time and I feel a bit rough today and, you know, things are not in my favour. You kind of inspired them, I think, by that sentence there. I was on a dialysis machine doing big deals with big companies. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, 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 I, I guess I can underpin underpin that like this, is yeah. that when you're in that situation, you can decide to be a victim yeah. or you can decide to be an example. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I decided to be an example. Well, you, you are a definite example, John. Yeah, and that's how I got through that. When when you put a post out a while back saying a little bit about your your story, because we, we, we'd spoken before, but yeah. but even though I didn't know how Ill, Ill you was, um, and you put a post out on Facebook saying a little bit about your story and what you'd done, I said to you pretty much straight away, come on, you need to come on my, you my podcast, you did, you and did. you need to tell this story. You did, yeah. Because there you are, not quite suffering in silence because you're not the suffering kind of guy Mm. but there you are with this illness and with a successful business and just getting on with things getting things done and I think you ought to tell plenty of people so that was what I said to you you know come on the show let everybody know you know none of us are here forever so get your story told and then it's out there for prosperity you know you know this opportunity is great to to do that to to share that I didn't Mm. think that was part of of the reason for the post is you know there's you don't you don't have to be a victim. You, mm. know, you can make a choice mm. and and do something and do something else. Yeah, uh, and and that's what I chose to do. It's about for for me getting through the illness because I'm fully recovered now because yeah. I've had a transplant. Yeah, uh, by the way. So in, in March eighth mm-hmm. eighth of March this year, mm. so a, a, a transplant. I'm kind of just three months post op. Yeah, um, and you're looking well on it. By the uh, way, thank you very much. <laughs> so it, it feel it feels good, but um, you know it was about not. Not being not not victimizing myself, yeah, and and then sort of believing I'm ill. It was always about believing to, that you you can be active and be better, yeah, uh, and that actually helped me get through the illness. Yeah, 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 sure. So the other thing I was asking was who inspired you along along the way. So um, there's been there are, there are lots of people that inspire me, but I think mainly what inspires me is people. You know, uh, uh, there's a there's there's a bit of film because I know is. Uh, bring this up it's called mm. uh, I call it going, going for gold okay? mm-hmm. and it's actually Dame Kelly Holmes yeah. uh, when she ran in the 800 metres final mm-hmm. in whichever Olympics I, I can't remember what, what it was mm-hmm. um, it's a f- famous victory because she got she done a double yeah uh, that, that's that, right she, she done a yeah, double yeah. that year now if you watch that how she runs that race mm-hmm. there's this whole thing about British athletes you know when they're, when they're last there's always this kind of uh, kind of dour statement, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. There was this fear that oh gosh, here we go again. Yeah. We're always in last. Always in last. And she was last. She was last place. Uh, uh, and then because uh, it's a two lap race, so then she kind of eventually made her way, her way round to the front of the um, of the field, mm-hmm. and then won the race right on the line. <laughs> okay. And, yeah. and And I call that going for gold because what some people do. In life, is they go for gold. So they could. Then Kelly Holmes, what she could have done, it rushed out and got and gone for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to the end and probably not made it. Be out of breath. Yeah, yeah. But she planned her race. Yeah, yeah. She knew exactly what she was going to do, and then she ex- executed the plan. Yeah, and then delivered. Do you know? Okay, and then she won. It's funny you should say that because I've I've ran a few ten kilometer races in the past, and mm. whenever I've ran them, I've run as fast as I could, run out of steam, and then sort of you know managed to sort of just about get over the line. Yeah, and yeah. Could have done if I'd have paced myself, I would reckon I'd have done a lot better. So yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, and, and and the key thing about the key lesson there is that imagine the fear of being last. Yeah, because it just brings a natural fear in you. Oh mm. my gosh, I'm last. I'm going to lose. Mm. You know, it's like that. But she dealt with that and overcame that. Stuck to, and stuck to her plan. She mm. knew what her plan was. Yeah, and then delivered on the results. So mm. that's my one of my key inspirations. Okay. Yeah. And, and what aspirations do you have for the future, then, George? 
So uh, there's a number of things we're doing in, in, in the business, mm-hmm. uh, in our property sourcing business. So yeah. we work we work, work across the spectrum. Yeah. You know, I've explained who we're working with, the single the organic guys, yeah. the SMEs, and the large institutional uh, service department operators. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing more work now on, on those, uh, the large institutional operators. So yeah. we're, we're developing that and uh, doing more more deals with those. But we're also now, um, we've just done a deal in, in Manchester, mm-hmm. um, and, and that, uh, that is where we, we've got- How um, many units? units so th- this there? particular mm-hmm. unit, we've, we've knocked out 30. Mm-hmm. Sorry, 15, sorry, because we had 30 originally. We yeah. turned it into 15, we didn't want to kind of oversubscribe it. Yeah. Um, and then we just put that in to multiple investors. They'll come and invest, we put uh, a single operator in there, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then that operates. So when you say single operator, what will this operator do? They'll look. They'll run, run and manage the, the, the service departments on behalf of the investors. So it's the hands right. off investment okay. for the investors. Yeah, okay. It's yeah. hands off. So yeah. we're developing more of these deals across the UK. We we'll probably have another one coming out very, very soon. But these are very uh, popular packages. Yeah. Uh, simply because of how we built the model up. Because mm-hmm. the model's built on a very strong return on investment. Mm-hmm. Uh, where, as a minimum, we look to. It, we look for deals where investors can get a return yeah. within 12 months on their, on their right. initial investment. Okay. If it doesn't stack up like that, then we don't package it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are you actively looking for investors at the minute? or So we're continuously to, continue to looking for, for investors. Why not? I mean, we've got, <laughs> no, absolutely, because we've yeah. got uh, an abundance of deals coming out Have you? Um, yeah, in, the, in the pipeline. Yeah. In fact, we've got some coming out now. I've just been to see about 100 units today mm-hmm. in, in Archway in, in London. Okay. Um, I've got another 100 coming in Bracknell. There were hundreds in Manchester, so yeah. You, you like round numbers, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it varies because we've got large. I'm, I'm talking about the large blocks, but we've yeah. also got smaller blocks of sixteen units, for example, in Bishop Stortford. Yeah, there's another thirteen hmm. in Staines. Yeah, um, another nineteen in Harrow coming online. So it's, we've got those as well. So without helping your competition too much, yeah. But someone that's wanting to start up and get involved okay. in the property industry and maybe do something allied to what you're, you're doing yeah what help would you give them what would you tell them to get them started so it, property sourcing is a broad spectrum again it's a broad field you know because mm-hmm. you can source you can stop source rent to rent like we are yeah um you can sort of, you can specialize uh, as we do mm-hmm. um you can also um source properties for to, to purchase you mm-hmm. know, deals like that you can, yeah. you can do bulk deals you can do commercials you know mm. so um, there, there are different things um it depends what it depends on what they're doing, what, what level, what level, what level they're at. Yeah, I think that uh, it's about networking with people. Yeah, is really important. So a lot of people say, "Oh, don't bother going to you know property networking groups and stuff like that. It's a waste of time." It's, it's essential. It's crucial. Yeah, yeah. No, so it's abs- tell us about that. No, it's absolutely crucial. I mean, um, I don't get to as many as I should do because mm-hmm. um, I'm just very busy. Yeah, um, you're busy doing what people are trying to do so yeah, yeah but there are people that I work with who do go out to mm. and, and I kind of feed off of those yeah but um, certainly in the early days we we went out to um, uh, proper property events mm-hmm. and it, it's that thing about um, against that thing about people yeah when we go to a property event you have no idea who you're going to meet and and I would say every single property event that I've been to mm. I've met somebody and it's led to something else yeah every single time without fail yeah so it's an essential part of it mm. yeah okay yeah. Yeah. so we spoke about uh, your illness what about family uh, how, how did the family integrate with your business because you're obviously incredibly busy yeah that's a really good question um, so uh, I mean, I've got a very supportive wife. She uh, she actually donated mm-hmm. her kidney to me for the did kidney. She, really? she did for the kidney transplant. Yeah. Wow. So, How supportive so, is that? So a big shout out to, to my wife. Sure, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm obviously grateful for that. Yeah. Um, she works in the business um, with, with with me right now, so mm-hmm. she's there in a supportive role. Yeah. Doing different stuff because, like I say, it's it's quite broad what we do. So mm-hmm. she 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 picks up some of that. So, so you are literally partnered together now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. We we look at we we sit and stare at each other all day. <laughs> We've kind of got she a bit of you, so you got my kidney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm forever indebted. Um, my, uh, so I've just done a speak, a, a talk at uh, the summit led by um, Jason Living and, yeah. um, and and Lee Pemberton. Yeah. So we just done a talk there, and I, I think and I saw an advert for it. Was there like half a dozen people that were speaking yeah. at the event? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So uh, on our, our intro, my son done our intro. Did he? Yeah. yeah. So he's 19, mm-hmm. Bradley. So he'd done the intro. Mm-hmm. And he's 
at uni, mm. uh, but that he's got some kind of gap now for three months. Right. So he's going to come into the business and do, and mm-hmm. do some, some actually next week. What's his yeah. What's his role likely to be? Uh, or, uh, tea or maker. <laughs> <laughs> Be maker. Yeah, general, yeah, general, general person. General dog body. Uh, do you know? Yeah. Do you know? I saw, I saw someone. Oh, it's my daughter. She, she, it's brilliant. She's been doing some job applications. Mm-hmm. She's nineteen, also at uni, mm-hmm. and she brought this job application to us, um, and it, it, it gave, gave a description, the, the job description, yeah. and in it, it described a role, right. and it said this will be a hybrid role, and I thought, was, <laughs> do you know? <laughs> I, 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 I thought it was pretty. Uh, <laughs> I try to remember. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. The first job that I ever did, the role was branch operative, and I said to the guy that employed me, the manager there, I said, "Right, so you're the manager. I'm the operative. What does an operative do?" And he says, "Anything that the manager tells you to <laughs> do." Right. Yeah. Like, okay, boss. <laughs> well, that's a bit like this hybrid means you're you're Yeah, you're yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you have to do everything. You have to do everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, I've asked you quite a few questions, George. Anything that I haven't asked you that I ought to have done? Um, uh, let me see. No, I don't think so. Um, uh, other than, um, no, I think that no, we're, we're good. Okay. We're good, yeah. Okay, yeah, then. Yeah. So we're getting towards the end of the, the show now. We, we like to impart as much information over to the people that are listening. Yeah. So we're, we're a sort of a, a wealth and a health. And you've, we've touched on the health. Yeah. And you've, your positive mental attitude uh, might well pick somebody up who's listening to this show. It could yeah. be anywhere around the world. Yeah. Uh, you, you're a shining example. So thanks very much for, for doing that. And on the wealth side, and you've given us some tidbits and bits and pieces about your property. Yeah your property business and the way that you operate mm. but let's talk property generally because yeah. it's a great way of, of making money as you know yeah yeah someone that wants to start off in property what's their best way to do it the first thing you've got to ch- t- t- tackle is your mindset right um f- for me mm-hmm. because that's what it was for me yeah um and that happened to me when i was about 25 mm-hmm um, and because I used to be a very, very different person. Yeah. I was actually full of negativity for lots of different reasons. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day I woke up and I was very fed up with it. So I did this sim- very simple analogy. I don't know where it came from. And I, what, in, my, in my, I kind of did this vis- visualization thing. Mm-hmm. So I took a, a glass, and this is what I imagine it. So I took a glass, yeah. and in that glass, um, I, I put it under a tap of cold water. Yeah. And that cold water would run into the glass and fill it up. Okay. And that cold water for me represented negative energy. So all the negative thoughts I had come into yeah, my head. Yeah. Okay. And then I turned on the hot water tap and turned off, turned off the cold. And eventually, if you do that, the cold water will be, will be displaced and replaced by hot water. Yeah. And so I saw the hot water as negative, as positive energy coming in. Mm-hmm. So it was a way of putting in positive energy yeah. and displacing the negative, negative energy. Negative energy, yeah. And that was the analogy that I used, and then I practiced that. Mm-hmm. So instead of bringing in positive, negative things into my life, whatever it was negative, I would redirect it and start putting in positive stuff. Right. And then that changed. That completely changed my whole mindset. Brilliant. Yeah, that totally changed my whole mindset. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and the way I feel. So the first thing I think is anybody wants to go into property is to, yeah, is to work on yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, go through some sort of personal development. Yeah. Um, you can work with family and friends about that. Yeah. You know, ask them what you're like and who yeah. you are. Yeah, uh, and then and then start from there. That's what I think that's the first. Okay, point. so what do you think about property training in general? Obviously, there's a, a whole different spectrum of trainers out there, but in general, what do you think about property training? So, for me to answer that question, it's easy for me to, to talk from the perspective of what we yeah, see um, yeah. uh, on a yeah. week-to-week basis, because we have a lot of people come f- to us from training courses, right? Um, and um, do you offer any training yourself or do you help them in any way? The training we offer is, is through is through our services. So if you come to us and say, uh, we're actually, I'm actually doing it now with, with a couple of cases. Yeah. So um, I've got some turnaround situations that we're doing and people have been trained through that process, if you like. So it's kind of an on-the-job training. So you, oh, right. you come yeah. and commission us for one yeah. of our services that we've got yeah. and then you'll be trained through that process. Okay. So don't do training per se yeah but you learn with us as you kind of what's the what's the company that you that you run george it's called the property directory right yeah okay yeah. let's yeah. get that plug in quick yeah 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 so it's called the property directory there's a website okay. www.thepropertydirectory.co.uk okay well yeah. you, you've just stolen my fund that i was going to ask what's the best way to get in touch with you so <laughs> you just yeah, you've given us that yeah. are you on um, facebook and linkedin so and such like the property directory directory has a facebook page right um so there's that and you can um on that 
website sorry on that uh, yeah on, on the web on the website mm-hmm. so on the facebook page mm-hmm. you can uh, you can join our mailing list yeah uh, you can also get a quote for services as well mm-hmm. on, on that there's a link there for that yeah um, we also run an addition uh, a kind of a sub site to that yeah uh, which where we're doing uh, weekly tips property sourcing tips mm-hmm. Uh, it's 12 weeks mm. um, it, we were on our 11th week right. uh, this week it comes out every okay. Wednesday can you but look at the back catalogue easily enough you can look yeah. at the back catalogue we issued a link last week yeah. um, for back, for the back catalogue mm-hmm. but we're going to be issuing some other kind of uh, schemes through that um, you know through, through that page right um, okay. it's not just going to be about, about sourcing tips and next week there's going to be a special announcement next week okay yeah. you're not, so it's next week you're not going to do it now then no it's going to be next week uh, it's, it comes okay. out it's weekly weekly <laughs> that's for the people <laughs> <laughs> keep them keep hanging on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so George, thanks very much for all the hot tips and bits and pieces that you've given us and the it's insight pleasure. into your business. It's a pleasure. Um, no, it's that, no, my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for coming along. Your positive mental attitude will spread love all around the world. I hope so. And hopefully, this will help you in a cathartic way as well. Because obviously, you you know you've you've had some illnesses and and uh, I hope you're feeling. As well as you can. I am. I feel great. Good. Yeah, okay, thank you George. Much. No, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that episode and until next time, start transforming your wealth and health now.